and your chest plate up, second set. And if you've come this far, and you're on the precipice of change, don't go back where you came from. Last day, one. Go somewhere new. Grow somewhere new. Stand up. You guys know that I love a good workout. I love to sweat every single day. I work out about six days a week, at least two hours on my yoga mat, doing Ashtanga yoga or doing a bar class. When one works out, their muscles break down. I, I tell my students here in Atlanta, I've been sore for about 17 years. And as we start to age, we start to uh, have a harder time repairing those broken down muscles. Now, a few months ago, my my friend Catherine Edwards introduced me to the product ASEA. I had been offered sponsorships before, but I had always turned them down because the integrity of the company didn't align with my own integrity. But the more I studied about ASEA, the more I studied about the owners, the person who came up with the formula for ASEA, the more I liked this company. And then I started to try the product. So what is ASEA? Again, when you work out, when you rip your muscles apart, there has to be a rebuilding system. When that rebuild happens, that is when your body technically gets stronger. We have in our body something called redox. Redox is this thing that helps. It's a signaling system between your cells. Now, when we are young, when we're kids, before we hit puberty, we have a lot of redox. That's why children are young and healthy and they can fall out of trees and skin their knees and be fine and recover quickly. But as we get older, that redox becomes less and less and less. So it doesn't really matter how healthy the cells are and the cells cannot properly communicate with each other. This means that as we get older, we start to feel more body aches. We start to get wrinkles. We start to get saggy skin. We start to get gray hair. For men, this means that the hair starts to thin and fall out. Again, it's like having a cell phone. What's the good in having an iPhone, like my iPhone, if there's no cell system to work it? The ASEA is the cellular system. Now, again, I'm a pretty healthy person. I work really hard on my health, so I wasn't expecting a huge difference with the redox. However, the benefits that I've experienced over these last two months of being on ASEA have been unbelievable. I feel younger. I'm sleeping better. I feel like my quality of life is better. Even my hair, I've always had really thick hair, but now my hair is like gotten doubly thick and it's growing like crazy. I literally just got my hair cut like two weeks ago and I am about to have to make another appointment to get it cut again because it is unbelievable how fast my hair is growing since taking this redox system. My nails are growing faster. Even my boyfriend, my boyfriend who is in his early 50s is starting to thin out at the top of the hair as what, what happens to men. And even he is starting to notice his hair grow back, which is common. If you look at the uh, the stories from ASEA, so many men have grown their hair back simply by adding redox back into their body. There are countless stories of people who have lowered their blood pressure, gotten off medications, cut their medications in half because their body is being supplied with the cellular system it needs to do what the body is supposed to do, and that is heal itself. Now, basically what you do is when you get your redox in, you can hear it's a liquid. It's a liquid. This comes with a little shot glass, a two, a two ounce shot glass. Most people will take between four and eight ounces of ASEA a day. I take eight ounces a day because I'm obsessed with this product. So you pour two ounces into the shot glass, you swish it around your mouth for 30 to 60 seconds, and then you swallow. That's it. You can't overdose with this product. If you take too much, your body will just pee it out. Now, when you take the liquid, you're allowing the intelligence of your body to take the redox where the body needs 
the redox to go. I've told you guys before, I struggle heavily with it, with arthritis. And in the past, I have taken medications for my arthritis, but I do know that arthritis is caused by overthought. It's caused by anxiety. However, medication coming from my doctor only dealt with the issue of the arthritis, not the cause. Well, when I started taking the ASEA about three days into taking this, I noticed that I was a lot calmer. My anxiety had dissipated. And I thought, how interesting is that? How interesting is that? My body knew that the source of the issue with my joints was coming from my own mind. So where did it send the redox? To my mind. There's also a topical gel that I really like. So when you take the liquid, again, you're allowing your body its own intelligence to take the redox where it is needed to help heal the body. But with the topical gel, you are able to put the gel where you want it put. I have been putting this on my legs for a while now. It has helped so much with the tightening of the skin, with cellulite, with varicose veins. It's also helped with the soreness of my legs. My legs get real sore from working out. I've been actually even putting this on my boobs you guys now again i'm 40 i've never had children so my boobs don't drop that much but i've been kind of putting it on my boobs too and i tell you my boyfriend really likes that so so this is a really awesome product but despite the the vanity if you have a sore leg or a sore knee or a sore neck you can put this on and direct the redox into the area that is in pain or inflamed and the redox will help with this i even use this when i'm on my period when i get my cramps i take some of the redox and i put it topically over the area where my uterus is and it it helps my boyfriend again has been putting the gel in his hair which is helping his hair grow back right now currently if anybody knows my boyfriend he is covered in tattoos he has been getting tattoos since he was in his 20 and he right now currently is getting one of his tattoos touched up and so when he comes home tonight we're going to experiment with the gel to see if the gel heals the wound of the tattoo even faster. Now, we want everybody, I want everybody to have the best quality of life that you can have. What's the point in being a human being if you're too sick or too off balance to be able to actually enjoy your life to be actually to be able to actually work out and have fun or to go bike riding with your children or get down and play dolls with your grandchildren this asia is going to help you and help your body achieve the life that you were meant to live in happiness and peace and health and in harmony if you would like more information on asia then please text bryce info to 321-216-8047 again that's bryce info to 321-216-8047 if you're texting from another country please make sure you put plus one 321-216-8047 and somebody will get back to you pretty quickly they can you can ask any questions you like of the product you can find out more information about the redox system the person on the other end of the line will walk you through every option available to you at this moment they can even try to help you get the products at wholesale prices so again knowledge is power knowledge protects and knowledge is infinite as i say all the time on this channel if you want more information please text bryce info to 321-216-8047Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and this video is a bit of a last-minute video. I wasn't planning on doing this, but we're going to have a little bit of a discussion because I feel like people are still really confused between their body and their soul. And this is coming up because there are theories going around our community about this idea of bodies being resurrected like loved ones coming back from the dead when our timeline flips and i'm kind of over here going oh dear no 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 oops like no that's that's not a that's not a good thing and b that is not going to happen and and i realized with people i'm talking to that there's still a disconnect between the crux of of this idea of of a conscious evolution of a great awakening of 
of an ascension, people are still really confused by what the body is and what the soul is. And by body, of course, I also mean the identity that your body carries. So this body that I occupy right now has a name and that name is Bryce. And that is my experience right now as a soul, but it's not my eternal soul's name. It's not, it's not my forever experience. And I know if you've been joining us, I mean, we talk about this a lot on my channel because as most of you guys are aware, my job off camera um, is I'm the only female authorized teacher in the state of Georgia. And because of that, I've spent many years in India studying. I've had some of the best philosophy philosophy teachers out there. I'm very grateful to have spent 17 years working on this philosophy and through this theory. And um, I know a lot of people have been heavily in the church or other religions where, of course, that's all based off of mind control. And so I know it's really hard to kind of understand this. And um, so I, I kind of thought, let's let's start from the beginning again, because some of these, even these bigger philosophies that we talk about, especially on Enough is Enough, I can't say the name of that platform that holds that channel or I'll get booped, but um, I can't put the link, but it's on the TEL Graham channel, Enough is Enough. Uh, we, we do a lot of talk about about this idea of, of shadow work and the body and Prakriti, Parusha, Shiva, Shakti, and I'm still getting people that seem to be very, very confused. So I want to talk about this because I don't want people to get stuck in the samskara of delusion, and I don't want people taken advantage of. So let's kind of go back to the beginning and this is a huge this is like the main crux of the yoga sutras of patanjali which is the five thousand year old text that we base all of our practice off um in yoga basically patanjali and the yoga sutras he basically say, says that the source of man's suffering the reason why man suffers emotionally mentally is because man is confused by who he really is so who you think you are is not actually who you are. And you're suffering because who you think you are is not your eternal self. What does that mean? So I, in my illusion and my delusion in this body, think that I am Bryce. But Bryce in my body are not eternal. They're mortal. They're prakriti. They're the expression of the soul. The Shiva, they're the Shakti. Anything that is the Shakti or the Prakriti, there are two laws for Prakriti or Shakti. And that is that it has a birth, a life, and a death, a beginning, a middle, an end. And because it has this evolutionary cycle attached to it, that means the second law is that it's always in a state of changing and evolving. Doesn't matter if that piece of nature is going to live 80 years or 400 years, it's still in that constant state of change through the expression of the soul. So when the body dies, when we, pa when we pass away, the body then ceases to be alive. It doesn't exist anymore. The identity of that body doesn't exist anymore. The identity of that body only exists in people's memories and thoughts. That's it. The soul that is occupying the body, once the body passes away, then leaves the body. Okay, so the soul then leaves the body and the soul goes on to the next experience. A new body or sometimes the soul from things I've read will take like a resting period before it takes a new incarnation, but it's no longer there in the body. All right. That's why if you've done any studies with past lives, that's why you've been different sexes in past lives. I know I've spent most of my lives as a woman. I'm very much that gets in the twin flame thing when you're you split souls. But it, and even in that situation, guys, even with the twin flame thing where the soul's old enough where it splits into feminine and masculine, even that, even if your twin who is out there is still stuck in a samskaric loop, that's okay. You have to keep pushing forward with your own understanding because you are having two individual experiences, even though you are the same soul. But that's a topic for a different day. We want to look at the basics now, just the, you know, spirituality 101. 
your soul is not your body. Your soul is not your identity of your body. Your body and your identity of your body is merely the expression of your soul in this existence. It's like, I've used this expression before. It's like when you go to an amusement park, you have so many different rides at the amusement park. Every single ride is giving you, is simulating a, a different experience for you. Some rides are peaceful, like the boat ride. Some rides kick up your adrenaline. Some rides give you fear. And you're choosing these experiences. Like no one's forcing you on the, uh, on the roller coaster. Like you're standing in line and choosing to have the experience that this roller coaster is going to give you in that moment. It's the same with your life. But that roller coaster ride, that experience is not who you are. It's just an experience. Who you are is the, the, the thing inside the cart strapped in experiencing the simulation. Okay? So when we talk about shadow work, we're talking about diving into the unpleasant experiences. Now, remember, karma is just cause and effect. That is all karma is. And if you are alive, I've, I've heard people say, oh, I don't have karma in this life. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. We all do. Karma, karma doesn't label itself as good or bad. Your perception of that karma is what you label good or bad through your own traumas, reactive mind, all that kind of stuff, right? All karma is, is cause and effect. Karma doesn't care about your feelings. It's just, it's it's the law. Every action, for every action, there is an opposite and equal reaction. That's karma. So the fact that I drank water this morning, the karma of me drinking water this morning means that I peed before I came on to film. The fact that I work out two hours a day, six days a week means the karma of that is I like putting bathing suits on. I feel comfortable in my body, right? Now the karma for me, if I eat food that doesn't sit well with my system, that affects the karma is having a stomach ache. That's all karma is. It's action and reaction. And through that action and reaction, through opposing forces of our emotional attachment to that is where we get the friction. And friction is how we learn, right? If we're comfortable, we're not going to learn. When we get uncomfortable, that's how we learn. That's why you came into a mortal body. And allowed yourself to go through the veil of an amnesia so that you would forget that you are an eternal soul. So we suffer because the thing we think is us. So I suffer because in my illusion, I think I am Bryce. But Bryce will one day die. So I'm constantly going up against fears and attachments because I'm trying to hold on to something that's not meant to be here forever. My teacher described it once as like trying to hold sand in your hand. You can't do it. You can try to hold on to that sand, but eventually the sand is just going to fall through your fingers. You can't do it. So we're suffering because we're holding on to something that is not permanent. But what is permanent? Your soul. And your soul is not your identity. So now let's back it up a little bit and look at this, this theory where people are talking about in our community how, oh, you know, the, the dead are going to rise. They're going to rise, you know, our, our loved ones who died five, ten years ago, a year ago, they're going to rise from the dead. No, they aren't. And God help us if they do, because that's not a good thing. Let me explain. When we talk about in these old ancient stories, well, first of all, we know Yeshua, the guy they called Jesus, was never crucified. So that's a fake story. Um, but if we look at Tammuz or all these other stories about something dying and coming back again, resurrecting, it's all metaphor. The resurrection is you remembering you're a soul. It has nothing to do with literal death. You go through what they call an ego death. And I'll explain a little bit more about that 
uh, later on in this video because I've been through an ego death. Um, that is the death you go through, is the death of the illusion. So part of spirituality is seeing the truth through the illusion. And that truth is has nothing to do with the outside world. That's why there's so many people in our community who think they're awake who are actually still dead asleep because they have yet to see their own truth through their own illusion. Your own illusion is, again, that you think you're your identity when you're not. You're a soul. It's like, you know, okay, we, we all have a wardrobe. We have a closet full of clothes and drawers full of clothes. Like, And they're all our clothes. Like we all buy clothes that we like that are comfortable on us. They're kind of something that I like to wear might not be something you like to wear and vice versa. So the, our clothing, our jewelry, all that kind of stuff, our makeup, that's all an expression. It's an artistic expression of ourselves, but our clothes aren't who we are, right? We change outfits, or at least I hope you're changing outfits every day. You know, then we wash them, we put them back on. And when they, we get holes in them, they're old, they're ratty. We throw them out, we get more clothes, you know, and it's all just an expression. It's not who we are. It's just our expression of who we are. Right. So like in the morning I wake up, I have my, my pajamas on and then I put my workout clothes on. I put my spandex and my sports bra on. Right. It's something I'm putting an outfit on to experience the workout. Right. That two hours on my mat. And then then once I'm done, I take a shower and I put my other clothes on to film or do whatever I got to do that day for a different experience. Right. So the workout clothes are for one experience to sweat, to push myself. And then my clothes I wear for the rest of the day are for a different experience for what I'm doing now. Okay, same thing with your life. This life is Bryce. I, I designed it. My soul designed it in a way for me to have certain experiences so that I would learn. My soul would know itself. Another life, there could be different experiences. Does, does, does that make sense? So when a body dies, the soul leaves the body. The, if, uh, if you've ever been to an open casket funeral and seen a loved one that is no longer, you can tell it's, they're not there. No one's home. A dead body looks very different than a body with life in it, okay? So once the soul leaves, that's what you're seeing. You're seeing the soul is gone. It's an empty vessel. So if we were then to, 10 years later, resurrect the vessel, guess what? The soul's not there. So that's, that's literally the zombie apocalypse. And if there's an empty vessel walking around, best believe another entity or spirit can jump into it and use it okay so once someone passes away i want everybody to really understand this once somebody passes away once you pass away if you if you talk to people who have had near-death experiences they say there's a light the soul walks into the light and it goes about its next incarnation it's done the life my life is bryce once i die whether that's in at the age of 80 or 400 who knows it doesn't matter because time is relative once that happens my soul's dis disregarding this body it's done the lessons are done and believe it or not your soul knew when it was going to be born and it also knows when it's time to leave the body the soul the soul is the watcher the soul is not emotionally invested into the emotions of the nervous system it's just experiencing it yeah it's just like when the the ride at, at the amusement park is over you're ready to get out and leave you unlock the seatbelt and you walk off and you tell your friends man that was a great ride you know like on to the next one so when we resurrect a body and the soul's not there, then we have a huge problem on our hands. Everybody knows I love the the franchise American Horror Story. I know it's owned and done by the controllers, but you can learn a lot from watching. And they do this then actually in season three in Coven. They 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 resurrect a body. And it's it's brilliant the way they played it actually, because it's showing you the soul is no longer there. It's not the same thing as before the person passed away. Now, yes, and this is when it gets really hard because, yes, we love our loved ones. Going through the grief of loss is one of the hardest things that you will go through as a human being. And I totally understand that. But I'm going to tell you that's part of why you came to Earth was to experience grief. That's the shadow work. So true love, to truly love somebody or something is to not hold them in bondage. We can see this in relationships. If you're in a relationship, friendship, 
business relationship with someone that's like super controlling, that's not really love. Yeah. Love is trust. And love is also allowing people to leave when it's time for them to leave, to let go. Uh, Ram Das always, you know, he talks a lot about death in his work and how death should be celebrated just like birth is because it's it's just as important. Death is just as important as birth. It's a transition. I mean, the great illusion is that death is real and death really isn't real. It's just the body you're discarding. Okay. So if you are one of these people who is attached to this idea that your loved ones are going to like come back to life. That's not love. That is love. That is an attachment masking itself as love. Yes, you love that person. But my question to you would be, what is that attachment? What, why don't, what is it you think you need from that person to be whole? There's your shadow work. And that you're not feeling the pain of loss because God hates you or you're being punished. You're feeling the pain of loss because this is your work. You, you have to get uncomfortable and feel things in order to shift and change and develop wisdom and understanding. Pain is real. And again, I'm going to remind you, that's why your soul came to a human body was to have that friction. To experience the illusion of death. To experience the illusion of separateness. Because it's all an illusion. It's all it is. And so that is something I would really encourage people to work on. You can be in a state of mourning and grief and missing the person that you lost. You absolutely, that is your, that is your love. But at the same time, while being in that place of grief, letting them go. Because that's their soul's journey. And by not wanting to let them go, and Sri Swami Satyananda speaks about this in his commentaries of the Yoga Sutras, anytime we have an attachment, whether it's to a person, whether it's to a religion, whether it's to an ideology or a job, it's an unhealthy attachment, that is where we have disconnected from God. So if you're feeling that, where is your disconnect from God or higher consciousness in that moment? Because God has a plan. Your soul has a plan. Your partners, your loved ones' souls have plans. And even though, again, I, I, it's super painful to lose someone you love, but can you trust that God and that person's soul has a plan and that you are also going to be okay? Because you're not separate from God. You never were separate from God. Never. You've always been. You've, you've always been a fractal of God. Okay. Now, I went through, I told you guys I would touch on the ego death. So the ego is the false sense of self. So that is when you are practicing yoga or doing any other true spiritual practice, that is what you are contending with. You are, it's the story I tell all the time of the Ramayana, right? It's you going up against yourself. So I'm going to reiterate this story. Cliff Notes version. If you want to read the Ramayana, I would absolutely suggest reading it. But this is going to be a very shortened Cliff Notes version. So in the Ramayana, Ram is married to Sita, his beloved Sita. And there's this demon named Ravana. And Ravana is like the most brutal savage of all the demons. He is the demon who cannot be slain. He has 10 heads. And if you cut one head off, another head grows right back. Like it's impossible. It's the, he's the most feared in the land. Anyway, Rava come, Ravana comes and abducts Sita. And he takes Sita to Sri Lanka, the island off of the coast of India. And Ram is devastated. He's lost his beloved Sita. So he hires Hanuman. Hanuman, I've got Hanuman. Hanuman is, I feel like, one of my guides. He comes up a lot. Here's Hanuman. Hanuman is one of my favorite characters in um, the Hindu pantheon of, of, of scripture. Hanuman is the monkey god. And 
he's the most even though he's the monkey god he's the most like humans um and, and you'll see more if you read deeper into the ramayana he has all these like powers and abilities he's the incarnation of shiva so one of the tri heads of of the of the hindu um re religion so he 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 ha but he has all these like really cool abilities and he forgets sometimes like he comes and he's like totally forgets that he can do these really cool things right and then he'll remember and then he'll like forget again right totally human yeah and one of his famous lines in the ramayana that i hopefully i won't cry saying this i, I usually get emotional as hanuman says when I, when I don't know who i am i serve you when i know who i am i am you right when i don't know who i am i serve you when i know who i am i am you right and so Ra ram hires hanuman because hanuman's like military he his day is tuesday which is also the day of mars which mars is the planet of war so he's like the military badass monkey who's kind of goofy too yeah and so ram hires hanuman to help him find sita so in this process of trying to, to find sita hanuman realizes that she's in she's in sri lanka and he remembers all of a sudden that oh crap like i'm this I'm this badass. I have all these like mystical powers. Duh, totally forgot. And he jumps part of his mystical powers. He's able to jump from the coast of India all the way over to Sri Lanka. Now his his father is Vayu or the wind. Vayu is wind, breath, right? Breath. Vayus of the body, the pathway of body. God breathed life into man and man stood up. It's the that 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 force of pranayama of, of of this magical breath that weaves the eternal and the mortal together so anyway hanuman finds sita in the woods where she's held captive and he, he's kind of like you know i could like kidnap her back and bring her back to ram but the same cycle is going to continue if i were to do that ravana is just going to come kidnap sita back and we're just going to continue that's called a samskara we're just going to continue playing this game over and over and over again like a hamster will no one's got time for that. So Hanuman's like, I've actually got to figure out how to defeat Ravana. That's what I have to do. And I'm gonna not going to tell the whole story of what happens, but he does end up defeating Ravana. And because he defeats Ravana, he's able to return Sita permanently back to Ram. Well, as I said many times, this is not really a story about a monkey god or um, a demon with ten heads. This is a story about you. Ram is God. Sita is your soul. Ravana, the ten-headed demon who cannot be slain, is your ego. That's keeping your soul entrapped because the ego thinks it's real. And the soul is not, the soul is, the ego thinks, tries to convince you the soul is the ego. Hanuman, that's your courage. It takes courage to go on the journey of spirituality because spirituality is not love and light. That's spiritual bypassing. True spirituality is darkness. It's ego death. It's mourning the fact that who you think you are, who you think you are is Ravana, but who you really are is Sita. And because the ego is the false sense of self, because the ego is tied to the identity, then the ego itself is mortal. It will die one day. And so the ego is going to do everything it can to hang on to the illusion that that's who you really are. But if you have courage and keep going up against that ego and keep challenging, challenging that ego, eventually the ego will die and you will be able to return your soul to alignment with God. Now, this is obviously a philosophy and a theory that I've been working with for 17 years. And for many years before I had my ego death, I would think about this a lot. If I'm not Bryce, then who am I really? If I'm not Bryce, then who am I really? And in theory, that's easy to kind of comprehend, but in practice, that's a lot harder. Well, back in 2017, I went through about three months of crying nonstop. I went through this total dark night of the soul where I realized how real mortality was and that once I die, Bryce doesn't exist anymore. Gone, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, gone, never coming back again. And that reality was really hard 
I, again, cried every day. I was probably in one of the worst depressions I'd ever been in all because when I die, I'm going to go. There's never, it's never going to, I'm never going to be back again. That was because I've been working on accepting this theory and it finally viscerally. So at first it was understanding in my mind, but then all of a sudden through my practice, it viscerally, I started to really understand it within my nervous system, within my, the depths of my knowing that when I die, that's it. Bryce is not coming back again. But that's the great illusion too, because Bryce has never really existed anyway. This is all a simulation for my soul to know itself, for your soul to know itself. Your soul and its infinite wisdom with working with God and your guides created a, a roller coaster ride, a simulation for you to understand who you are. Who you are has nothing to do with flesh and bones. Who you are has everything to do with your eternal soul. And after three months of just nonstop mourning, I woke up one day and I'll never forget, I just all of a sudden felt a hundred pounds lighter. And I kind of had this new perspective. Oh my God, if I'm not Bryce, then like, who am I really? like? Let's get to know the soul because the soul is that fractal of God. And I started to really enjoy life more. I, I found myself being able to actually love deeper and forgive easier and to really feel and experience things happening to me because I understood now, viscerally understood that this was all temporary anyway. And I planned it. My soul was like, this is what's going to happen. This is the roller coaster ride we're going to go on in this life. And the next life, I don't know, maybe next life I'll do the bumper cars. We'll see. And my compassion and my empathy for other people became greater. Because the more that I recognized my soul, the more I saw other people's souls too. And that's why I keep telling people, I don't care who someone voted for. I don't care if they've got this or not. Because it's all a simulated experience. I see their soul. And judging somebody else because of their experience is no different than me holding on to the falseness of my own experience. That's the resurrection. It has fuck all to do with your body. Your body. Now, with that being said, as a human being, you have to, like when you go and get on that roller coaster ride, you're going to fasten the seatbelt. You're going to hold on. You're going to do what you got to do to experience the ride. So using the body with, you know, you can't neglect the body. You are a spiritual being and you're having a human experience. So you got to lean into those experiences, but you have the knowledge that they're temporary. You need to take care of your body. Again, exercise, we've talked about this, and I will include the yoga and shadow work playlist down in the description box. Exercise isn't about punishing your body. Exercise is about understanding your soul, believe it or not. Because even though the body isn't really who you are, it's the Shakti of the soul. It's the experience of the soul. It's where the chakras lie. It's where the bandhas lie. It's where all the values, the passageways of energy lie. And so for the experience here, you you absolutely need to be exercising every single day as part of your spiritual practice. Nothing is going to pull up your shadow work more than when your ego is humbled. And exercise is what humbles the ego right? We have Mullabunda at the base in the perineum. And in my bar classes, I squeeze a ball in between my legs. That triggers the pathway up my inner thigh into my perineum, which is the root of Mullabunda. Mullabunda, again, is part of the energetic experience because it's not in the body, but we can feel the sensation of it through the friction of the body. The Bundas, even though it's a very deep, deep visceral feeling a burning sensation it's actually connected to the breath to pranayama we have the chakra system and the solar plexus manipura which is right here that's your your power right the stronger your core gets the more you're able to stand up straight 
and be alive in this experience. As Alan Watts said, the point of life is to be alive. Be alive. Because in being alive, that is when you start to really lean into the experiences of that life. Being alive doesn't mean that every single day is a walk in the park. No, of course not. We go through death, loss, tragedy, heartbreak. That's all part of being alive, which is then in return giving you the knowledge to understand that your illusion is that you're a human being right now, and that's it. But the truth is you're actually an eternal soul. And we see this illusion in things like religion, where people yell at each other and tell each other that the other person's going to hell because they don't believe what that person believes. Well, that's coming from fear, which is coming from the ego. So the person doing the screaming and the judging is coming from a place of fear because they have an attachment to a false sense of identity, right? Where the soul isn't afraid of anything. Because you can't kill a soul. The soul's eternal. The soul's been around for forever. I hope that makes sense. And I really, I just really encourage because the, that's why I keep trying to tell you guys, like the truther community is the exact same as the normies. It's two sides of the same coin. It's two wings of the same bird. If you really want to wake up, if you really want to join the Great Awakening, you got to leave both worlds behind. Be a seeker. Calling yourself a truther is pretty arrogant. It means that you have the truth. None of us have the full truth. So we came to human. We came to human so that we can experience and learn and gain wisdom. We're seekers. We're seekers. All right, you guys. So I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, please ask them down in the comment section below. This is your journey. Th these understandings. I can sit here and talk about this all day until I'm blue in the face, but I can't understand it for you. You have to understand this for yourself. And it's, it's easy to sit around and talk about a theory, but then you put it in practice and it becomes a lot harder. So I encourage you to start that practice. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. You know, that's just a distraction. It's just esca an escapism. Worry about yourself. What's going on inside you? Where is your shadow work? Where is your friction? I hope that makes sense. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.